Hi there, my name is Risa. In this Lens Studio tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use the Lens Marker template. The Lens Marker template allows you to create unique lens experiences at selected locations around the world. Similar to marker tracking, Lens Marker tracking tracks the visual features of a specific physical location's landmark. Utilizing Lens Marker tracking enables you to create a 3D experience tightly tracked to the landmark's unique architecture. Let's get started. First, open Lens Studio and select one of the Landmarker templates. For this tutorial, we'll work with the Eiffel Tower Landmarker. With the Landmarker template opened, let's change the preview video to the Eiffel Tower preview video. In the scene panel, there is a 3D reference model of the Eiffel Tower. Each Landmarker template comes with a 3D reference model of the corresponding architecture. The reference model is built to align with the real landmarker's physical features. It is located under the Eiffel Tower Place Content here. For correct alignment, make sure not to scale or offset the mesh. The template comes with some example assets, flower, vines, and cracks. You can drag the example prefabs into the objects panel to create new instances of them. When you are positioning your content, make sure to use the reference model as the size and position reference. You can also import the reference model to your preferred 3D software for more precise content contention. An FBX of the reference model is available for download from the Landmarker template guide found in the Lens Studio documentation, linked in the video description. I'm going to delete all the example assets now. Next, I'm going to import this bird FBX by dragging it into the resources panel. I'll now drag them under the Eiffel Tower scene object too. I want to have a few of these birds surrounding the tip of the tower. I'm going to duplicate and position them a little bit. Okay, pretty good. We've placed custom 3D content around the Eiffel Tower, but we can also edit the texture and material of the landmarker as well. Let's take a look at the Landmarker Controller object. By default, the building mode is set to Occluder. This means that the reference model is only used as an occluder for other content and itself invisible. The semi-transparent mode will color the building in red, which can be useful for debugging. Select the custom textures mode if you want to create a graffiti design, coloring effect, or entirely new look for the Landmarker. By default, it's using the reference textures as the custom texture. You can download the reference textures for all landmarkers in the guide below. You can also import the reference model to your preferred texturing software to create custom textures. I'm going to import this simple rainbow texture I made from the reference texture and drag it over to the inspector panel. Now the Eiffel Tower is colored in rainbow. You can also apply a different material other than on lit if you want a cool PBR material on the Eiffel Tower. For example, I can create a new PBR material and go to the actual tower mesh to change the material. Note that the landmarker controller should still use the custom textures mode so that the script won't override your material setting. The hint controller script controls all the different hints that guide users when playing a landmarker lens. In summary, there are three different hints, the loading hint, go to hint, and look at hint. You can modify the hint text and the hint graphics in the hint controller inspector panel. For example, I will add an Eiffel Tower image from Giphy and use it as the hint graphics. The landmarker templates include a debug mode that can be used to preview the landmarker lens without having to be at a physical location. You can unlock the debug mode by scanning the default Lens Studio image marker. In the preview panel, select the image marker preview video. Once the image marker is visible, the lens will enter the debug mode automatically. The building mode under the debug settings only controls how the landmarker looks in debug. It won't change the actual lens experience. The full size mode teleports you into a first person debug scene that simulates physical distance and scale. You can use the navigation UI to move around the landmarker. Since the camera mode is set to gyro now, if you pair the device, 
You can rotate your phone to check out different angles. If you are mainly testing in lens studio, it might be more useful to select the look at distant target mode. As you move around, the camera will always look at a distant target. You can position the distant target by moving it in the scene panel. In this case, I want to set it pretty high up so that I can see my birds flying. You can also move the default debug camera position to set the initial camera position. If you want to change the navigation speed, for example, it might be moving too slow for you, you can adjust it under Orthographic Camera Navigation UI Navigation Controller. I will double it to 40 so it can move much faster. The other debug mode is a bird's eye view. Bird's eye mode places the entire 3D scene on the image marker. This creates the effect of having a miniature scene you can physically manipulate. You can toggle between full-size mode and bird's eye mode using the toggle button. If you want to print out the default image marker, search for Debug Image Marker in the Resources panel and you can print it there. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating your own landmarker lenses.